Hey, thanks for joining us today. And as we prepare to see the message today, as you're getting ready to watch, we just want to invite you to really consider the blessings that God has poured out on you. You know, um, whether you're in a series of uh, hardship or health is in decline or, or maybe everything's fine, it doesn't really matter because our blessing, our spirit of blessing, isn't dependent on any of those things, our circumstances or what have you, but on Christ and Christ alone. And so today we're going to examine a story about that. Pastor Doug's going to lift that up. It'll be a great time. I, I really sincerely hope you enjoy. If you're moved to connect with us after the message, feel free to hop on over to firstchurchnp.com. There's all sorts of ways to learn about what ministry opportunities are coming up, to serve, to connect. As always, our students are meeting Sundays at 6. Children are meeting Wednesdays at 6 as well, but there's also that family dinner at 5.30. So a couple of uh, those things. And as always, if you're able, that is, we'd love to see you in worship. That's Saturdays at 6.15, Sunday at 9, and Sunday at 10.30. Let's talk about being blessed. I have a lot of just kind of like unusual experiences, okay, so as I go through the week, so I want to begin with one of those. This one happened uh, last weekend uh, after worship. Uh, a young boy just came right up to me, reached out to give me a high five. That's kind of what he and I always do. And then he just flashed this really kind of ornery look, and he said, I slept through your talk. <laughs> the nerve! I mean, the nerve of that, you know? And then he started to walk away with a great big smile on his face. In his mind, he had won a battle in our ongoing verbal sparring match. Well, some of you know that I have a spiritual gift that's rather unique. It's called competition, okay? <laughs> I think that's in the Bible somewhere, but uh, it kicked into high gear. And, and with that gift uh, all kind of engaged, I knew I was not going to lose this one. So before he got too far away, I just spoke to my little friend and said, thank you. Well, that totally disarmed him. That's what gratitude does. If you want to disarm someone, just really get them kind of off balance, just express gratitude for something they've done or said. So he turned around, and he just looked at me like I was some kind of real weird, okay? And I cannot kind of own that, but at this point, I knew I was winning. So I made eye contact, and I said, Jesus loves you. His whole appearance was transformed right there. Now he was smiling a different kind of smile. It was much bigger. There was a lot more joy in it. And I, I just had declared a blessing on him that he did not expect. And it was a victory. It was a victory for Jesus, not for me. It was a victory for Jesus because now there was even more joy in this little boy's life. A blessing changes lives. A blessing changes lives. Maybe that's why the Lord tells Moses to declare God's blessing on other people. And that's where our text begins in Numbers chapter 6. This is what we hear. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his son saying, Thus you shall bless the Israelites. We remember the story of the Israelite people are, are desperate. They're desperate for God to show up. They're desperate for God to change things in their lives. The Lord asks Moses and others to declare a blessing. But here's the thing, the Lord asks you and me to declare his blessing too. And the reason is because God's blessing changes lives. Earlier this week, um, I had to go down to Lincoln, Omaha area and take my mom to the doctor and and so I had the opportunity to do a little people watching. It's what I do for entertainment, you know. It, it's, it's better than TV and a whole lot of other things. So I just doing my people watching thing, and I noticed something. Everyone was in a hurry. Every single person I saw was in a hurry. Greetings were short, and they rarely expected any kind of response. Patience often took a whole lot of energy just to kind of hold it together. And the whole purpose of life, 
The whole purpose of life seemed to be little more than to get to the next place fast. It made me think. Just to reflect on my own life a little bit. I wondered if I get so focused on what I'm doing that I miss God's blessings. I wondered if I get so busy trying to get some things done that I fail to declare God's blessing on another person. The Lord had to tell his people to declare his blessing on other people because it's not something that is a normal part of the rhythm of our life. It's not something that comes real natural. We have to be reminded to declare God's blessing on other people. It's easy to miss God's blessing, receiving that blessing in our own life. And it's just as easy to miss declaring God's blessing on another person. So going back to Numbers again, chapter 6, this is verses 24 through 26. The Lord actually gives us a blessing that we could declare on another person's life. And, and as I read it to you, I want you to notice all the different ways, all the different types of blessings that we can declare on another person. And this is how it goes. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. What is there? Like about five or six different blessings there, all in one blessing. And we could choose any one of those and declare that blessing of God upon another person. She'd been struggling to take care of her husband for a while. He was not able to walk much and his dementia was beginning to advance very quickly. She had reached the point where she could no longer care for him in the way she wanted and that he needed. Now, most spouses I know hold out as long as they can in providing care for the one they love so much. And what I've seen over and over and over again is that they take their marriage vow seriously. They take it seriously. They remember when they said it on their wedding day and they hold on to it their marriage. And so this is, this is a typical wedding vow. A promise to have and to hold from this day forward. For better or worse, for richer or poor, in sickness and in health, in joy and in sorrow, to love and to cherish and to be faithful as long as we both shall live. She believed it back then, and she believes it now. Caring for your soulmate is what love does. But she looked tired. I mean, to the bone, exhausted. She looked troubled, like a soul-deep dis-ease. I said hi. We exchanged a little small talk, but I knew this was not a time for small talk. So I asked about her husband. And, and it was almost like a confession. She said, I can no longer care for my husband. I need to start making arrangements for his care. And what I saw in this woman's face and heard in her words is that her heart was hurting in ways that probably most of us don't comprehend. I made a commitment to pray for him, and I spoke a blessing on her. In the midst of bone-crushing tiredness and a soul that was deeply, deeply troubled, the Holy Spirit poured some peace into her heart and even a little joy onto her face. It didn't change the circumstance, but it changed her big smile came on her face. The thing is, a blessing changes lives. A blessing changes lives. A blessing is also a precious gift. The Israelites had been set free from hundreds of years of slavery in Egypt. They were on their way now to the promised land, and that's what we know today as Israel. The Lord had given them one miracle after another, one sign after another, one expression of love after another. 
You would think that would be enough. But sometimes we just need to hear someone declare God's blessing over us. So the Lord tells Moses to instruct the people to begin declaring God's blessing on every person. And the Lord gives Moses the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Declaring God's blessing begins with a decision. We decide that we're going to give a gift to another person. A precious, precious gift. And we can do that in many different ways. You probably have more ways than I know, but we could speak an encouraging word and that becomes God's blessing. Or we could send a kind note and declare God's blessing. Or something that doesn't happen hardly ever anymore, we could actually write a letter by hand that gives life and declares God's blessing. It's a gift, a precious gift. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit begins to rewrite that person's uh, narrative. Their attitude changes, their, their story changes, their future changes right there because we made a decision to give a precious gift of God's blessing to them. And the Holy Spirit grabs hold of that changes a life by giving a precious gift. A blessing almost always begins with listening. Listening to the other person. And I just want to invite you, find someone this week. Listen for a while. They may live under the same roof as you do. They may work in the cubicle next to you. They may be in the same class as you or live right next door. Listen for a while and do your absolute best to keep the words I and me out of your conversation. Then listen some more. Many people, many people simply do not have someone who will take the time to listen to their story, whatever that story may be. A few good questions will keep that other person talking and sharing, and they're just going to be blessed because you listened. But after you've listened to their story for a while, then declare God's blessing on them. Speak the words in the name of Jesus over them as a blessing. I received an email this week from someone who offered to listen. I just want to read a portion of the email to you. This person begins, Doug, I've been thinking a lot about the letter you sent out on the choices and changes coming to the Methodist Church. I've been wondering how you're doing with all of this. It's one thing to figure out how to manage and administer a situation. It is another to live it. If you ever feel a need to visit with someone who is used to just listening and keeping his mouth shut, I would certainly be glad to visit with you. I won't be offended if you don't, but I did get to thinking that we can tend to assume that our pastor has it all figured out, and maybe that is not a fair assumption sometimes. Now, this isn't just about me. It's about all of us. If you want to bless someone, begin by listening. Then declare God's blessing upon them. You see, we're not much different than those Israelite people that Moses was leading. Sometimes we get discouraged and disappointed. And sometimes it's easy to conclude that the Lord doesn't care, or worse yet, that the Lord can't help. The people in Moses' day and the people in our day need to be reminded that God is still blessing us. So the Lord tells Moses, tells you and me to declare God's blessing upon other people. 
Because we need to be reminded that Jesus loves us and God is blessing us. I remember the opening lines of the song, uh, You Say, by Lauren Daigle. I think the song describes kind of what I would say is our human condition today. Lauren sings, I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? And then this is a line. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. You know someone who needs you to declare God's blessing on them. You know someone who needs to, you to declare God's blessing on them. They are silently crying out those words of Lauren's song. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. When we declare God's blessings on another person, we remind people just who they are. They're a child of God. They are loved by Jesus. And God is preparing right now to bless them in a special way. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let's pray. Jesus, sometimes we just get so wrapped up in our own little thing or get so busy just running from one thing to the next. that we miss receiving your blessings. We miss experiencing your love. We miss the comfort and the strength and the courage that you offer to us. But Jesus, you know that we also miss many opportunities to declare your blessing upon other people. Holy Spirit, would you please today, would you please today help us to listen to the story of another person. Let us not bring any agenda to that conversation. Let us keep ourselves out of that conversation. Let us just listen. Let us listen, Jesus, like you would listen to their story. With patience, with compassion, with empathy. And when we've heard their story, would you give us the boldness of faith to declare your blessing on them? Oh, Jesus then would you please just multiply and magnify that blessing in their lives. Remind them just who they are. Precious and loved child of God. This has been your desire for us. throughout all of human history, that we might know your love and that we might bless others with your blessing. But humanity so often gets distracted by the pain or by the busyness, by the self-centeredness of our lives. You tried everything, Lord God. You tried everything. 
And finally, you sent your only son, Jesus. You sent your only son, Jesus, to remind us just who we are, how much you love us, how much you're blessing us. He came to live, but he also came to die. To open the way back to your heart. And so on the night before that he died, Jesus gathered his disciples, his followers together in a home in the city of Jerusalem. And there they shared a sacred meal together. And they visited and they prayed and they laughed and they cried. In the midst of all of that, Jesus, you lifted up some bread and You broke it in two. You gave thanks to the Father, and then you said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then you lifted up a cup of wine, and again, you gave thanks to the Father. And then you said, Take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you. For the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And so Holy Spirit. We pray that today. As we share in the loaf and the cup. You would make them become for us. The body and blood of Jesus. For the forgiveness of sin. But also Holy Spirit. During communion this morning. Would you please. Remind us just who we are. Children of God. Loved by Jesus. Over whom all of your amazing blessings are being poured. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.